Hello there and welcome to Mental Health Monday and the first in a new series, Mental Health Myths. I'm a little bit cold, so hat again, jumper again, massive headache. I don't know why the cold gives me headaches, but it does. Anyway, this first Mental Health Monday Myths um, is going to be dealing with a very close subject to my heart. I have seen a few memes around, just a few, um, suggesting that there are people who consider bullying to have been the thing that made them strong. And you always get a particular type of person putting this type of meme up. The sort of person who is contemptuous of those who are not strong enough to handle their own shit. I think that's an ignorance thing, but I don't know whether they realise that that's an ignorance thing. Because my opinion is that the only way that you can think that somebody who has somehow managed to be damaged by the damaging thing that's happened to them is weak is if you're ignorant, you know? Okay? I'm just gonna, you know, launch into some statistics just to put this in real terms right now. There are some charities that approach certain schools. They don't approach all schools because that would be impossible and give children surveys to complete to find out some sort of baseline statistic for the kind of levels of bullying that are going on in schools and how it's affecting kids. Of these children surveyed at these schools, 43% said that they were being bullied. Okay, 43%. Of that 43% that said they were being bullied, being bullied, not having been bullied, being, 44% um, of them said that it was happening at least once a week. At least once a week. 29% went on to self-harm. 27% went on to skip class. 14% went on to develop an eating disorder. 12% ran away from home, sometimes more than once. 74% said that they had been physically attacked. A physical attack resulting in grazes or bruises or a chipped tooth or something, that's actual bodily harm. That's the law's definition of actual bodily harm. So 74% of the kids that said that yes they were being bullied have been subjected to ABH in the school environment. 78% of kids surveyed this includes kids who ticked no in the are you being bullied box, ticked yes in the I have been cyber bullied box. 78% of them. It's a lot. And cyber bullying is pretty much accepted to be the new form of bullying and it is having some devastating effects on young people. I mean devastating effects. The, the rise of suicides amongst kids who are targeted by cyber bullies is going up at a frightening rate. The, the, the rise of kids entering into eating disorders and self-harming is going up at an alarming rate. All of this stuff is happening, you know, it, it is quantifiably happening. And how many schools deal with bullying properly do we know? Because I don't know of any of them. Most schools do not admit that they have a bullying problem. They have bullying policies, but if bullying actually happens, this wall of obfuscation immediately slams up in your face. I have seen as a mother, and as a pupil when I was at school, but as a mother I have seen children who commit offences of bullying over and over, never seem to actually get any kind of punishment for it. Or they'll be put on behaviour diaries and they'll have the occasional suspension, you know, but nothing actually is done. They are not expelled. We have this perpetuating myth in society that somehow bullying is a rite of passage. That somehow it's fine. It's just something that kids do and you have to deal with it. Forget the actual destructive outcomes of bullying. Most people who go through bullying will go on to experience depression, anxiety, uh, suicidal thoughts, um, trouble in their personal relationships, trouble in their work. It devastates. This, this is the actual fact of bullying. What it is, is a destructive force. Okay, that, that's the fact of it. Not harmless fun, not a rite of passage. It's destructive. Destructive and damaging and harmful and should never be tolerated. And if you somehow came through all of that, I suggest you look to the people in your life who maybe supported you through it. Because they're the reason why your esteem came back up. They're the reason why you've been able to fight on with your life. The vast majority of people who've gone through bullying, hopefully, will have people in their lives who will support them. Hopefully will go on, even if they don't have any support in that environment, will go on to a better environment where they have better support. Yeah? And they will, they will come out of the damage done to them. 
hopefully they won't carry too much of it into their adult lives. Or if they're an adult who's being bullied, hopefully they'll be able to leave that workplace and go to one where they don't get bullied. But on the whole, the reason why you recover from bullying is either because you go into a situation where it doesn't exist or you have external support from somebody who acknowledges your pain and acknowledges that you are being harmed and tries to help you. There's no, you know, fighting through it by yourself and coming out the other end a strong person. That is a nice little myth to believe, but the statistics don't support it. The basic fact is that we are seeing more and more and more young people completely destroyed by bullying. If you want to go on YouTube, the same site I'm on here, you want to look for all those videos of kids just putting up their story on cards. Kids whose lives have been completely and utterly dismantled, I mean like burnt to the ground by bullying. I had that and I wasn't even in an age of cyberbullying, but they took my life and they burnt it to the ground and I presume that was just them having fun. I presume I should have just been tougher, grown a thicker skin. The trouble is there is a discord between the actual fact of what is caused by bullying and what people want to believe is caused by bullying. That's where the mythology comes in. The mythology that bullying is not harmful, the mythology that bullying is just a rite of passage that people have to go through is just that. It's a myth. It's a pile of shit. The facts support that bullying is on the rise and that the, the harmful effects of bullying are on the rise and that we have to step up to the bat to protect our children. There are children's lives at risk. Children are killing themselves because we are not accepting that they are going through hell every day at school. Or at home. Maybe they're being bullied at home. And people are dying because people aren't listening to people who are being bullied at work. We need to stop telling people who are bullied that they are somehow not strong enough. That they just need to toughen up. We need to start instead listening to them and saying what can I do to help. And then doing it. Simple as that, do it. Expel kids who bully. Give them guidelines. Because some of the kids who bully go on to have their lives fall apart because they're bullying because their lives are crap anyway. So sometimes we need to support the bully as well as the bullied. Other times it's just a bunch of assholes being nasty because they can. Unfortunately, kids can do that. But other times you have a situation wherein someone really needs some strong guidelines and support in their lives because they're bullying, because they're feeling hopeless and helpless. The answer is never to pick on somebody else. The answer is never to make somebody else feel worse so you can feel better about how bad you're feeling. Ever. It's never an answer. That's where I'm going to leave it. That's my take on the whole mythology of bullying from the perspective of someone who experienced it and from the perspective of a mother whose children have experienced it it harms and it harms badly and we need to do something to stop it. We need to tackle bullying and completely eradicate it. Frankly, we need to make our children more tolerant and understanding and we need to become as people more tolerant and understanding of difference. There you go. End of. That's that. Thank you for watching. Next time I have no idea what I'm talking about because it's coming up to Christmas and I've been on deadline and I have a million things to do and I haven't had a chance to think. I have a list of things that I wanted to talk about with regards to recovery so maybe I'll have a look at that and we'll see where we go in a couple of weeks time but in the meantime thank you for watching I hope this was helpful there'll be loads of links in the description box and in the blog post also for schools if anyone who's a teacher or a head teacher watching this and you actually want to take on tackling bullying in your school for actual real which would be great there are links to those charities that do these surveys they also go into schools and help schools tackle bullying on the ground so Hopefully you'll see this and you'll want to tackle bullying and help the children who are suffering in your school.